This video provides an overview of the analysis results that are available in ShapeBuilder for various models and loading conditions. Let's get started. Starting out, we have a standard W shape made of A992 material. Also, one horizontal shear flow line has been created at the intersection of the web and the top flange. Looking at the simple tab in the results pane, we see an overall section as well as sections for the geometric, principal, polar, and plastic section properties that are created for the cross section. The results in the simple tab are computed using numerical integration and do not depend on the finite element analysis or the finite element mesh. Looking at the advanced tab, we see a section for the FEA mesh and sections that show the minimum and maximum normal stresses, the torsion properties, and the minimum and maximum shear stresses and warping function, as well as a section for the shear flow. The normal stresses, shear stresses, and shear flow values are currently zero since no loads have been applied to the model. Clicking on the Analysis tab, we see that the only results available to view are the flattened model, the mesh, and the warping function. When we apply a normal force and or a bending moment to the model, we can view the results for the normal stresses. When we apply a torque, we can see the St. Venant shear stresses, and when we apply a shear force, we can see the flexural shear stresses. Also, the combined and resultant shear stresses can be seen. The torsion properties and the shear stresses are determined from the finite element analysis, so it is important to refine the mesh until these results converge. The normal stresses and shear flow are mesh dependent but are not calculated from the finite element analysis. Going back to the sketch view, let's add an aluminum plate to the bottom of the beam and look at the results of the gross cross section. In the advanced settings, we see that there is a section that says torsion section properties, shear stresses, and the warping function are only available for cross sections with a single boundary and material. Since we have two different materials, we cannot get these values from ShapeBuilder, even though we have a single boundary. Now, in the analysis view, we can only view the flattened model, the mesh, and the normal stresses. Under shear flow, we see a single asterisk by QX and QY, which indicates that these values have been transformed by the modular ratio of the elastic modulus divided by the base elastic modulus. Switching to the simple tab, we see that most of the section properties have been transformed by this modular ratio. Looking at the plastic properties, we see a double asterisk, which indicates that these values have been transformed by a different modular ratio, where the yield stress is divided by the base yield stress. When a material has more than one yield stress, which is the case for this aluminum, the minimum value is used in the modular ratio. If we go back to the sketch view and change the material of the plate to A992 steel and add some bolt holes to look at the shape's net section, we see that the asterisks go away since the section is no longer composite. Looking at the advanced tab, we see that we still cannot get the torsion section properties, shear stresses, and the warping function since there are multiple boundaries in the model even though there is only one material. If we go back to the sketch view and add a concrete deck to the beam, we see that the plastic properties are no longer available for the cross section since the concrete does not have a yield stress. This video briefly demonstrated which results are available based on the loads you apply and based on the number of boundaries and the number and type of materials in your model. Thanks for watching and have a great day.